Now that we've finalized inspiration and even completed a few DIY projects for our guest bathroom makeover, it's time to add trim, install structural details, and reveal the paint colors that we've chosen to make this unique space warm and relaxing. Welcome back to episode two of Making Over Our Guest bathroom. It is the first space we are tackling in our home renovation in terms of design now that we are past the construction phase and in episode one of the series you guys saw my overall kind of inspiration, my mood board, the direction I'd like to take the design in the space and also that design will kind of carry through the rest of the house so all of the spaces are cohesive and look like they belong together in the same house. We also tested loads of paint samples because I do want to take a risk in this bathroom and go dark, dark brown specifically. It was a little bit daring, so I wanted to make sure that we tested all of the paint samples. So I'm going to share with you guys the one, the final one that we selected. I also showed you guys all the amazing things that I've been collecting for this space, the sink, the all the faucets that we've had on order for a year. We ordered a year ago. The tile that's going to be going in here and also did two DIYs one simple just restoring an old mirror that I found in an estate sale for like 25 bucks and also the vintage phonograph cabinet that was built in 1904 that we transformed into a vanity so it was a work in progress last episode and I want to show you guys how amazing the knobs turned out with just a little bit of brasso so these are brass knobs that I found on Etsy left the brasso kind of rubbed on there for about an hour and a half and I think they turned out beautiful it just kind of took the patina away on the brass I couldn't wait I put one on <laughs> I think they're absolutely beautiful. I think this cabinet as a whole came out more beautiful than I had imagined. And I know I took it down like to the bare wood, the bare veneer wood, I guess. Um, but I think it was so worth it because it just looks so expensive and rich. This part isn't brass. It's gotta be some kind of, I don't know. This, this, this part wasn't. I think it adds a really cool look to the knobs as a, a back plate obsessed. They're just so pretty. Look at that. Ugh. I love this cabinet. This cabinet is done until we get the granite. Um, so that's going to happen all at the same time. Our fabricator is going to come and measure the cabinets in the kitchen, the vanity in this bathroom, and then the vanity in the primary bathroom as well and then cut and fabricate all of the counters and bring them in. So we'll have to wait just a little bit on that. It's also gonna add a little bit of height because the granite is about an inch thick. Oh, love. Where I left you guys last time, we were deciding on a paint color. So there are two paint colors that are gonna go be going in here, a light beige tan and a dark brown. And like you guys saw and you guys agreed, natural linen was it for the light. This is natural linen by Benjamin Moore. All of these paints are Benjamin Moore. And I think it's going to be the a nice, light, moody complement to a dark that we're gonna pick. I was on the fence completely between Tudor Brown and Bittersweet Chocolate. And then we had something that I got that just decided for me. I had our fabricator cut me a piece of our granite. <laughs> the granite that's going in the bathrooms and the island in the kitchen. Look at it. I love this granite so much. Now we can't see all of the colors because there's actually a kind of rust vein that runs through our granite, which is absolutely stunning. That's, that's actually not going in this bathroom. That's gonna be staying in the kitchen, that rust vein. Um, so we had this. So then took our paint samples and I said, okay, wh which one do I want? And hands down, Tudor Brown was the way to go. I love it. It's warm. It's going to be on the ceiling and in this alcove that's even darker than the you know the main walls. I feel like it's just beautiful and stunning. These colors are just everything. And then when you pair with our like brassy elements, look at that. Ugh, the color palette just came together. It was Tudor Brown. Mom said Tudor Brown. You guys majority voted Tudor Brown. We're doing Tudor Brown. Here's the two colors. Can you guys imagine what this vanity is gonna look like when the granite goes on top? It's going to be so beautiful. <laughs> it looks so expensive. 
expensive. Like we did such a good job, I feel like, turning a phonograph cabinet into a van and it's sturdy. It's not gonna have any issues holding the granite. We have a lot to do in this episode. We have to get this room paint ready. We have to do trim. We have to build the door frame, install the door. Romeo is actually outside right now, sanding the door down. It's in great shape. It was original to the house, um, but we just need to kind of take a layer off or just hit it a little bit so that we can paint it. The trimmer on the door and the door itself is gonna be natural linen, which is the walls on this side. And we also need all the trim, the original trim to the house. I wanna use all that we have salvaged and saved, which is everything from the house so that we can then determine how much more we need. I know I'm gonna need more trim details and we'll go and we'll match all of that stuff. I am going to get everything out of this room and we are gonna start working on the details. Project number one is set. We have to demo off this sheetrock on this little, little wall I wanted. It's because this faucet is wall mounted, meaning it comes out of the wall. It doesn't sit on the vanity, it doesn't sit on the sink. So if I want a detail like I want, I want beadboard here. Even if I was to put tile here, what it does, it, it makes the wall thicker. I won't have enough threading on this to actually get the faucet attached. The thicker we make that wall, the further away from the actual, I don't know, water spout we are. So we gotta take off the sheetrock so that we can just put three quarter inch thick beadboard there and we have enough threading. Project number one. In and out of love, never getting up. We never seem to get older. When things are going right, you seem to have the time. But when it's hard, you just grow cold up. We should be good, but we'll keep out of fires. The words you be, cause we're scared of the silence. We should be good, but we'll keep out of fires. Fires around ourselves. Okay, we are putting beadboard here. I want beadboard on the front, the top, and also coming down this side. So it's just like the whole little shelf is covered in beadboard. This is all salvaged beadboard that we already have sanded from the house. I want the front and the top to come up and meet. So I'm gonna be mitering them so that the, it's like a really good, clean edge here. Measure, cut, and I'm gonna use a nail gun, um, a finishing nails to put them in. Been here a thousand times. Set up a stage of lights. Say we're done, say it's over. Okay, so I have two pieces. I have a long piece with an angled edge, and I have a short piece with an angled edge. So when they go together, they're gonna fit <laughs> perfectly at a 90 degree angle. This one goes here against the wall. Get all the smaller pieces out first, just like linking them together. So they're all perfect. I am having to fix this wall a little bit so that it's perfectly kind of square. I don't, don't ask me why. I shouldn't have to be doing that, but I am. Um, so I'm gonna nail these in. Well, it's the next day, and I may have spent way too much time on this wall uh, all day, but I wanted it to be perfect. All the seams match up perfectly. This 
edge. Needed all special dimension of pieces. I'm very proud and it's perfect and it's ready to be painted. I spent all night last night caulking um, the seams and the holes and the pin nails, everything. It's perfect. I was even, oh, also there were a lot of problems with this wall. I should have built this wall myself. I don't know why, but on this side it was four inches, but on this side it was three inches from the wall. The plumbing wasn't in the center, so I had to redo the plumbing. It also wasn't far enough forward. It looks so pretty. Okay, so you guys have seen me build door jams, like we did these two. We built this, this is just the jam, and I built the transom window that goes above it, which is just kind of skinny window to make all of our doors feel really tall. These are all original to the house, so they were all a little bit different sizing and a little bit wonky at times. So I wanted them all to appear to be the same height, so we put transom windows over all the doors. That's both the exterior and the interior doors. So this is our first interior door that we're going to be doing, but the process is, the exact, is exactly the same. So I'll leave those videos linked for you where I built the door jam and also the transom window separately. I always start by taking a measurement of my door, the existing door that I have, and also the space that I have, where it's going. So the framing of the door opening. And I just kind of figure out from there what type of jam I need. So for the, all of the interior doors, the doors are gonna be an inch off the ground. So the sides are the height of the door plus an inch. And then the top piece is the width of the door plus the thickness of each of the side pieces of wood. So these pieces of wood are three quarters of an inch. So I take the size of the door plus an inch and a half. That gives me both of the pieces so that we could put all the pieces together. Essentially, that's it. And we put it together and we install it plumb and flush and straight and square and all the things. So I need two pieces at 82 and a half inches and one piece at 35 and a quarter. Last time to put the door frame together, I used just wood screws and it was a little hard to manage. So this time, since I built the cabinets and I'm a little back in love with a pocket hole maker, I'm gonna be using a Craig pocket hole jig to put some holes and attach it that way. I think it's gonna be stronger and easier to handle. Also, I have these 90 degree angle clamps that are so helpful in so many ways to make things perfectly square. Now I marked the placement of the hinge from the door, exactly where it was on the old door. Basically shave off about an eighth of an inch here so that the hinge sits really flush into this piece of wood. So I have this little tool here that comes in very handy and then you screw it in and use a router to carve out that eighth of an inch. We have a door jam. Okay, so here are my, my thoughts here. You see this light switch? I have five inch trim. Let me show you. If I have five inch trim, at one point I'm gonna get too close to the light switch and it's not gonna fit a plate. So since I have a little bit of room, I'm gonna position the door frame and the door as far this way as I can. So this is essentially going to be completely flush. Then we'll add the spacing here and you know some support and so that when we, we screw it in it's all perfectly plumb and, and good to go so we'll start on this side <laughs> at least that's my thought process life is a winding road you tell me where it goes driving through days and nights and pray if I even if I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my heart.
Honey, I'm home. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> Yeah. We got it up. A little bit of sanding here and there. These old doors aren't perfect, so they always take some adjusting. Okay, now that the door is in, we just need to do a little bit of sanding. I'm going to make the transom window that goes on top of it. Now this project is like fresh in my head because I just finished this one, the one for the primary bedroom, and picked up all the glass. So I, I kind of primed my brain for it. We're just building a box that holds some glass. And what holds the glass is trim, and trim that I have salvaged from the house. So we're just gonna assemble the box together. And all of these projects intimidated me until I did the first one. And then it got a lot better. Sky's <laughs> falling down. original to the house so we've got the little corner pieces we've got the molding along the bottom we have mold, like baseboards and we have the trim easy peasy putting it up now that it's sanded we use my nail gun and then I'm gonna go back and fill all the holes and prep this to be painted I can't believe it I can't believe a room is gonna start coming together I'm so excited are going in here one tinted gray for the dark color for the brown and then one is just white for the lighter color so there's a lot happening we're gonna start with the darker color um, so we are gonna prime the ceiling and this alcove area with the gray primer I think the best plan of attack is to go ahead and spray the dark primer spray the dark brown paint then hand paint the lighter color. I don't know why, but that's our plan. Let's do it. Show me what it's like to be circling among the clouds. Because without you by my side, I would be stuck here on the ground. You're lighting up the way I can see the road ahead of me. I want to 
like you're stumbling in the dark Your eyes are shining like the stars I was down Until you saved me Until you set me free My eyes were closed Now I see clear as day And I just wanted to say That you can take me high Feels like I can fly You can take me high I can see the sun staring at you when you make that smile I'm moving closer to you now I can't get close enough somehow And I was down Until you saved me until you set me free my eyes were closed now I okay the moment we have all been waiting for tutor brown <laughs> i'm so excited i don't like gray this is not the vibe i want to go for let's do it it's ready two coats we're doing two coats i'm scared <laughs> I can fly I don't need anybody I don't need anybody else No one will ever take me No one will ever take me away from you I promise I will hold on to you I don't know what I'd do Without you looking really good in here you guys we still it's still a little tacky I don't want to do the second coat of the brown until it's um, good and dry while we wait <laughs> let me show you the other color so natural linen we went with to pair uh, with the Tudor Brown or to pair, pair with any of the colors it's so pretty and creamy like a warm toasted vanilla <laughs> can take me high Feels like I can fly You can take While me While we wait, let's talk about tile. So this is the penny tile that we're doing in there. So it's gonna go on the floor and the walls surrounding the cloth foot tub. And I wanna test it. <laughs> Um, both in application, like using the thin set, and also test a grout that I just picked up. The color is coffee bean. It actually looked closest to Tudor Brown, and even a slightly darker, which is good because grout kind of goes lighter than it should. So I'm, I, I think it's worth a shot. This is <sighs> Versabond. Home Depot carries this. Versabond Professional Thin Set Mortar. This is good for both porcelain and ceramic. Of a creamy peanut butter. Creamy peanut butter. Mm -hmm. Too much water in the mixture, it'll be too thin and squish up in between the tiles when they are laid into place. Ah, I'm not gonna do a lot. I'm do it literally doing a sample. So we're gonna make it creamy peanut butter, mm -hmm. right? Okay. I feel like it could be maybe slightly thicker, but I think that that's pretty good, especially for a sample. Does it look too watery? I don't think so. That sticks to it, right? I think so. <laughs> oh, maybe this works. We have to wait two days. It's just one, 24 hours one... on the bag. Oh, okay, one day. We have to wait one day. Yeah, it's a 24 to 48 hours. All right, that makes sense. Okay. Let it dry just, just a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and grout it. But we'll obviously not do that when we do the real thing. Ooh, feels like flour. Ooh, looks like cocoa. <gasps> I'm making a mess. We're gonna have to vacuum all this up. I'm making a mess. What's DIY if you're not having fun? Go like this, turn it upside down. If it 
If it's still wet, it's wet. It fall. I think the color is pretty. It, I think it looks like the Tudor. Oh, it definitely looks like the Tudor. We yeah. don't know if it's gonna be lighter. Yeah, we don't know if it's gonna dry lighter. Maybe. So we'll let this fully dry. We'll start kind of mapping out the placement of the penny tile and doing all of that work because obviously we can't grout it until like the last step. So I love the contrast. I like it a lot more than it being tonal. Gives it so much texture. So we stayed all last night doing a second coat on the ceiling in the darker brown color, and in a couple of places, a second coat of the natural linen. And it looks beautiful. We still need a second coat in the majority of the natural linen area, especially on the drywall, because I always find when I paint textured walls, I always tend to need two coats because it's just rougher to paint on. So we're gonna do that, but it is looking beautiful. I moved all of the pieces that we have so far back in here and it's really starting to take shape. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. In episode three, we are tiling, we are moving in the cloth tub, we're doing fixtures and crown molding, baseboards, refinishing the floors, sealing the floor, all, so many things. So you're not gonna wanna miss them. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification so you know exactly when I upload new renovation videos here. And for even more behind the scenes, you can check out my blog channel too. So I will see you guys next video. Bye guys. Okay, Romeo was not going to tell me that I had paint. <laughs> I probably have paint everywhere, but especially right here above where I was wearing the mask. <laughs> that is not what this looks like. <laughs> Take me high